I'm frequently asked what I think about GMO, uh, genetically modified organisms, um, and or non-GMO. It's not so much, it doesn't really matter what I think. Um, I'll try to provide just some basic facts. Uh, frankly, it might be, most people might be surprised um, when I say this, but there's no harm in eating a genetically modified plant. It's not like they're Frankenstein plants. In fact, what minor modifications to their genetic material might have taken place, um, those are gonna be destroyed in your digestive system, the acid in your stomach, the proteolytic enzymes in your stomach. So that might sound a little strange that I'm saying that. It doesn't mean that I eat GMO, but that's not the problem. The problem with GMO as they are currently found in our country, in our society, is what that genetic modification itself represents and what it then means in terms of the growth of that plant and how it is farmed and what it has done to agriculture in our country, which is just horrific what it has done to agriculture in our country. Uh, of course, we don't use any GMO organisms and GMO, our products are all non-GMO. Of course they are, they're all gluten-free. So what is the problem with GMO then specifically? The most common genetically modified crops in our country are modified crops that have been modified to essentially make them impervious to herbicides. What is an herbicide? Herbicide, if you kind of take the first part of that word, herb, um, and if you, in, in French, the, uh, the word for grass, plant, l'herb, L apostrophe H-E-R-B-E. So herbicide is something that kills a plant. And the problem with herbicides, when you want to kill weeds, so your plants that your crop you're growing will thrive, you really want to avoid those weeds, you want to kill those weeds, trouble is. You use that herbicide to kill weeds, it kills your plant itself, the desirable plant. So the GMO that, is, that proliferates in our society, these are genetic modifications that make these plants essentially immune or impervious to just enormously high, incredibly high levels of these herbicides. So basically, what GMO is, is a license to drown our fields in herbicide, to essentially create these desert fields of grain, whether it's wheat or corn or soy. So what we've done, when you're not, when you're done growing that crop, that crop that was impervious to the herbicide, you basically have a desert that you've left there that maybe a few straggling resistant weeds might grow in. But it's just literally vile and disgusting what it does to all the millions of acres of healthy, otherwise healthy soil in our country. And healthy soil requires that all these other organisms and, and things, friendly flora exist in the soil. It, it has to be a mo microbial environment that's healthy for the roots and, and nourishes the plant. But what's happened with these GMO crops which our, our fields are swimming in these toxic chemicals that these crops have been designed and genetically, genetically modified to be resistant to, or uh, they're not poisoned by these poisons. So that's the problem. And the problem really isn't even the poisons that will be on the plant that we eat, but that our planet is then swimming in those poisons. Because when you really look at the use of these chemicals, whether it's pesticides or herbicides or fungicides, to me, the, it is bad that we then consume them when we consume those plants. What is worse is that multiple times more of those chemicals is washing off into the soil and into our environment, into our rivers and streams and oceans and atmospheres, and we are basically living, breathing, and drinking these chemicals. We are drowning in these chemicals. So GMO is bad not because of a genetic modification. People think of these Frankenstein plants that we're gonna eat them and somehow it's going to cause cancer in us. No, the genetic modification will never get through the defense systems in our body. The genetic modifications aren't the problem. The problem is these genetic modifications allow these agricultural concerns um, to drown their plants in these poisons, essentially. So drowning our, our fields in these poisons, creating these deserts out in what were previously these agricultural fields teeming with life. 
When you use these chemicals, these poisons, they're no longer teeming with life. It upsets the entire balance. It used to be that farmers a century or so ago would have multiple kinds of crops being rotated throughout their fields. You can drive through areas in this country, you could drive for an hour and only see one kind of crop. That is not how healthy farming is done. And hopefully we could turn a page back because there are farmers in this country and agricultural concerns in this country that can grow incredibly healthy crops, vibrant crops, without resorting to genetic modification, without resorting to these pesticides and herbicides and fungicides at these outrageous levels. In fact, in a funny way, I always say this, for thousands of years, we've been engaging in genetic modification of all the plants that we eat. And you might be saying, how's that? Well, if you have a garden at your house and one year you have a great crop of say, great tomatoes or things, you might take the tomatoes from that plant and save their seeds to grow next year. You're preserving the genetic material selectively from those plants. Uh, you might breed it with another plant that had characteristics that you like. So that's genetic modification done the natural way. So genetic modification isn't inherently the problem. It's that genetic modification then becomes an opportunity for us to basically poison our planet. And it doesn't have to be that way. Um, that is not necessary for us to grow more crops. If, if we didn't have those genetically modified plants and the ability to use these poisons at these outrageous levels, um, it wouldn't cause starvation on our planet. We'd have the ability to make just as much food as we need. So again, genetically modified, it's not inherently a bad thing. If there was a genetic modification that might cause resistance to frost, which people do that naturally anyhow when they look to breed plants that might have that kind of resistance, that wouldn't be a problem. The problem with the genetic modification that's most frequent in our society today is the ability to use, grow plants that are impervious or resistant to these horrible toxic chemicals.